Second, this legislation would extend a funding commitment from the state that will expire at the end of fiscal year 2012. This bill will extend the commitment for another five years through 2017. Third, the bill will subject the Greenway Conservancy to the open meeting laws. While many nonprofits do not receive do receive some type of state funding, and some receive more dollars amounts than what we're talking about today, the Conservancy needs to be held to a higher standard. Not only are they receiving state funds, but they are also in charge of some of the most valuable land in the city of Boston, and what I dare say, the entire Commonwealth. Finally, enact, finally if enacted, the fourth part of my bill would be that the Board of the Greenway Conservancy would be required to get budgetary approval from a second entity, Greenway Leadership Council. This would create the necessary system of checks and balances that would further help build the public's trust that the state funding is being spent wisely. I believe in the public-private partnership that exists between the Conservancy and the state. I just believe we need to do a better job in creating better transparency and better confidence in how these state dollars are being spent. These steps, if enacted, will start that process without destroying the current system that is currently in place. It is imperative that we continue to uphold the commitment of the state for the people that lived for 16 years along the construction of the Central Artery Tunnel Project in what is now known as the Greenway. The commitment, that commitment is that we have fully functional top-notch parks. Everyone's ride into Boston today was quicker and less congested because of the sacrifice that was made for 16 years by my constituents. We cannot go back on our work. The Department of Transportation should not be in the parks business and the Department of Conservation and Recreation is looking to privatize their ranks in the greater Boston area, a sign of their unwillingness to take on more responsibilities. The public-private partnership is the best avenue to take to ensure these commitments stay and stand firm. I filed this last year because I felt it was necessary to get a conversation started about this issue. I'm not wedded to any of these individual ideas, but I think we need, we need something needs to be done. I thank you for your time, and I'll answer any questions if that's all. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, there's no question you succeeded in getting the conversation started. Uh, there's uh, uh, we receiving you know, quite a bit more testimony, but you know, uh, willing, obviously, will be in touch with you as uh, the committee will uh, the deliberation. Are there any questions? Yes. Yeah. Probably obvious in the uh, release that you gave us, but who oversees the distribution of the funds? Currently, uh, the Department of Transportation. No, but under your proposal. Uh, it would still be the Department of Transportation. Thank you. Any other questions? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I see uh, Amy Rushton Stanley. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, I'm Georgia Murray. I'm chair of Rose County Greenway Conservancy. And we really look forward to engaging in the discussion. Um, so 
I'll invite some brief remarks and then be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, when Representative Michael was uh, introduced the bill this morning, or this, this afternoon, he said that this was to start a discussion. And I think that's a really important thing to have um, that this bill was filed by a year ago. Um, we are now three years into running this anyway. And so it's evolving. Um, we look forward to that evolution. And we look forward to working with all of you to make sure that evolution works very well. Um, the legislature passed Chapter 306 in 2008. Um, that was to make it a public private partnership to run the Greenway. Uh, it was studied over the years um, in terms of how best to run the Greenway. Um, and we're happy to report that under the, the nonprofit conservancy that runs it, um, increased participation, increased activity, um, really enjoyment of the Greenway has increased. Uh, substantially. Um, back in 2008, uh, there was the talk of whether it should be um, a pub, strictly public, strictly private, or a public-private partnership. Over the years, uh, there was a lot of study, as I'm sure most, many of you were a part of, in terms of how the Greenway should really be funded. Um, there was, it was usually considered to be part of public-private partnership. There were times which might have been considered to be a private, but most of the time it looked to the state, which recognized that it had basically a mile and a half long loop deck over a tunnel that lots of treasure had gone into, and lots of Senator Michaelis talked about um, disruption of the city and the neighborhood. And so there was, there was this expectation that the Greenway would make it work all that effort during the big days of both time and money and, and neighborhood and um, We think that it, it's evolving. Um, it, it is not perfect, but it is really turning into a great public cause. Um, the original legislation talked about $5.5 million as a cap that the state would put into the Greenway, the operation of the Greenway, but it was always a 50% funding that it would be up to 5.5 million, up to 50%. Um, in, but 2008, we don't remember, was one of the last good years um, in terms of funding, and so never has it been above 2.9 million. We've had a 28% reduction over three years. We now get 2.1 million in this fiscal year from the state. Um, that now represents not 50% of our budget, but about 40% of our budget. Um, so who is this board at the Greenway? Um, we're 15 individuals, we're volunteers. Um, five of us are appointed by uh, government officials, two from the legislature, one from the governor, two from the mayor, the city of Boston, and 10 are appointed by the Greenway board. Um, there are two ex officio members of the administration. Um, we serve as volunteers because we really believe in public run. Um, we really believe that this, that this park has the ability to unite people, not just in the Columbia neighborhood, although that's important, but throughout the Commonwealth. And we're happy to report that we have a lot of usage, not only by the neighbors, which make it just a great, lively park, but also by many people who come in from different parts of Massachusetts and many tourists. Um, it's really very clear that it's an economic development tool um, for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, since we've, we've been running Greenway, we've raised $8.2 million in charitable contributions. Um, that supplemented $14.1 million of public funds. Um, it's interesting to note that 66% of the individual contributors come from outside Mr. Boston. Um, the Conservancy and nearby property owners are engaged in discussions about a possible Greenway business in the district. If that goes forward, that will further leverage the state money um, so that the Greenway can operate in a really manner without more state money. Um, the board hopes that um, HB 1803 will be considered in the light of how to maximize public funds and maximize the effect that they have. Um, our lease agreement is up December of 2013, and we're looking forward to working with the Secretary of Transportation, Richard Davey, um, and the legislature to work on how to make that go forward. In light of those, let me, let me go to the amendments themselves. Um, 
Yes, section two of HP 1803 talks about public meetings of the board of directors. Um, under the current legislation, we are required and we do have four public meetings a year. We do two of those in the morning and two of those in the evening so that we can try to maximize the public participation but people are busy um, and there is usually not a great attendance at our public meetings. We therefore would be having video um, as, as our videographer is doing for us right now uh, and they are up on the website. Um, the, we, we also have usually two to five public meetings a year about specific subjects. Um, this year we have a public art initiative and that is getting a lot of interest and so a lot of people are coming to those public meetings. It's a bother. We understand that we have public money and that we are a public park. Um, we are open to talking about how we can follow the spirit and the intent of the Massachusetts Open Public Meeting Law, recognizing that because we are a nonprofit and we need to be able to both strategize and achieve funds from charitable corporations, from charitable foundations, and from individuals, we need to be able to have some sense that we can do that as a nonprofit and be successful going forward. Um, sections 1 and 3 propose a veto authority for the Greenway Leadership Council. Um, the Greenway Leadership Council is a neighborhood advisory council composed of 13 members, 5 appointed by the board, and 8 appointed by public officials drawing from adjacent neighborhoods. Um, its members contribute their time, um, their dedication, and they help us with decisions about annual programming and activation and future park improvements. Um, we do question, we, we, we recognize the GLC has value, but we question whether approval authority over budgets and contracts is the best way to integrate them into the life of the Greenway. Um, as a nonprofit corporation, the Greenway Board is the fiduciary body. But we really do look forward to this continued discussion that we had and that we, that we really um, worked on very much with different joint committees of the Greenway Leadership Council and of the board, and we really anticipate doing much more of that in the future. Um, in section three and four, Representative Michael Lips and Senator Petricelli proposed extending the state finance assistance to the Conservancy out to FY17. Um, we, we also understand the realities of where we are. We understand the realities of fundraising. Um, they are near and dear to our hearts with both how we spend the state money and how we collect and spend our philanthropic money. Um, we appreciate their advocacy. We appreciate the support. Um, we look forward to having a comprehensive, multi-year solution, um, working with the Department of Transportation, working with you um, to see how the green lake can go forward together. Because as you can imagine, um, when you have any amount of um, speculation about how things will go forward, it makes it harder for any of the other parts to go forward. So we look forward to resolving this. Um, we look forward to discussions, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much uh, for coming here. I just had a question in a, in a couple of areas. Other committee members may. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the idea that, that was being looked at of the uh, creation of an improvement district with the financing and funding mechanism. Could you just describe that in a little more detail, including if you know whether you're talking about adjacent property or something wider uh, away from the Greenway? Right. Um, about two years ago, we entered into a discussion with the abutters of Greenway, and it's, it's a fairly narrow um, support line, um, about a block along the Greenway. Um, chapter 40 um, allows there to be business improvement districts. The first one in Boston is the downtown grid right down the street. Um, we, are, we hope that we will have the second one. It is, um, we are in discussions with the property owners now. Um, chapter 40 allows us to um, ask the commercial abutters along the Greenway to self-pack, basically, um, along the formula, so that that, in that additional tax beyond what they're required to give to the city now will go into a special fund that will go into the Greenway. Is there any estimate based on the current values as to what that might generate? Uh, well, it will depend on who opts out and who opts in. 
um, about about two million dollars. Um, the the we is our hope. Um, the it is not the bid is not a done deal. The bid is in discussion now. Um, but we have, we hope that it will be a three-legged school right now. And you'll you'll have lots of details from us. But right now our our budget is four point seven million dollars. If you look at everything in terms of these types of public parks with the wonderful green fountains that we have, with all the concrete, with all the the, the um, wonderful infrastructure we inherited, um, it, it it costs more to run those parks than it does for grass parks with trees. We are a mile and a half long roof deck. Um, there we are protecting the tunnel, and part of the greenway is. It's mighty shallow um, that protects that tunnel. <coughs> so it takes a lot to make sure that that tunnel is protected and maintained, which is part of our, our mission. Um, we should be at a $6 million budget, not a 4.7. So it is our hope that we have, we can, by, if we can have these letters read to go into a business improvement district, that we could have a $6 million budget by keeping the state funding at the $2 million, keeping the, the philanthropic at $2 million or above, and keeping the bid at $2 million, with the hopes that philanthropy will increase in the future. If, if the district did generate $2 million, uh, how would that you know, translate into a percent of participation? About 33%. It, so it, a third, it, a it, third it's, degree of participation generate $2 million in the district. Right. If, if the state gives us a, a basic stipend to the Greenway. Um, if, if it can keep to that $2 million level, I think that the bid will be willing to enhance that with another $2 million. I don't know that, but that is our hope. So that there can, right now is a two-legged school, state and philanthropy, and we need a third leg for that school. Um, the second area I was going to ask you about, uh, you've got some public prominence. The Secretary of Transportation wrote a letter uh, to the board stating some conditions about the funding and the incentives and the future of it. Has, has the conservancy responded to the secretary's letter? We've had discussions with the secretary on the letter. Um, we are working on a written response. There's some homework for the ASCII's petition before we give you that written response. Um, I hope to have that out shortly. Um, we, we, are, we are open to many. He, the, the secretary's letter of January 31st was to extend the lease beyond November of 2013, he asked for some certain things. And we are working on those. One of them, and the most important one, is a, a plan that talks about the next five years of funding on the Greenway. Um, and that he's given us six months to do, and I hope to keep that, but I don't know by how much. Um, but that will be done um, in the summer. My final question is, when you do uh, provide him a written response, will you share that with us? Of course. Uh, any questions from members of the committee? Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Two of you. I, I, um, Murray, thank you so much for coming here this afternoon. I just want to start by saying that, uh, that, that, that I, I do appreciate the Greenway. I think it's a wonderful space. Um, and, and I think it's a wonderful addition to the park. I think uh, to the to the city. I think uh, Representative Michael Witt said that it was, uh, in a sense, it was payment for 16 years of, of agony going through the uh, through a big dig. I would actually say that it's probably uh, 60 years of payment of having to have an elevated highway going through your neighborhood. So I do appreciate the park itself, um, but I do have concerns. And I see on your written testimony. Uh, under on the first page of bullet point number eight says that you were sure that 100% of the financial burden would not fall to the state. Uh, and I understand that the, the uh, Greenways budget is about 4.9, I think it was seven. Um, and it currently receives 2.1 from the state, uh, or at least last year. Too. But on page number five, uh, where it talks about the Greenways operation and maintenance costs, uh, it says that the operation of maintenance cost is 2.6 million. And right. so I'm wondering, is, is it really, are we saying that the state is actually putting in 90 plus percent of the operation and maintenance of this of this park? Uh, because then if we just divide it, if we, if we just divide the 4.7 by the number of acres, it comes up to about 300,000 per acre. Right. We, we did this study because we wanted to show the state what it would cost for just basic operations and maintenance. 
in these numbers are not a lot of what we think of as the Greenway um, when you talk, talk about the 2.6 here. Um, for example, any of the programming that goes on in the Greenway is not part of the 2.6. Um, any of the, the extra events, any of the, um, the, the new improvements to the Greenway, the, 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 the planning for what will hopefully be a wonderful carousel next year. Um, the planning for that is not part of that, nor is the fundraising to get to the carousel. Um, all all the, the improvements that have been made take staff time. In order to get philanthropic dollars, you have to get people who go get the philanthropic dollars. You have to pay for the overall operation of the way. Um, the executive director and the senior staff, none of that to the state paid for. I understand that. I understand the difference between just kind of maintaining the car, uh, keeping it clean, keeping it operating. And so I guess that's what I'm looking at is saying, well, then if that's the case, then the state probably funds 90% of the actual operation and maintenance of the park itself, uh, excluding the philanthropy uh, or the, uh, the different programs that go on. But the actual operation and maintenance of the, the they, they do about 75 to 80% of the operation and maintenance now. But, but this, this, these parks that are listed on page five, that's apples to apples. I mean, that is, those parks have higher costs too. But we just took out operations and maintenance because some of these parks have much more programming or much more of something else. So we were trying to just do a baseline of strictly maintenance with some with some garden. Um, you talked about the improvement uh, district, and, and and I think that's a that's a wonderful idea. But with, and with all due respect, I, I, I want to phrase this. Uh, in a way that doesn't sound disrespectful, but why would, the, why would the district and the businesses need the concurrency necessarily? Why couldn't they form this as a separate entity? Why couldn't they, why couldn't they take on that? How does, it, how does the district and the concurrency tie themselves together? And, and is one mutually uh, necessary to the other? Well, it's been about two years trying to convince people, so let me, let me put it down in, in, in a few minutes. Um, what, the Greenway Conservancy has the lease on, on the, the, the Greenway, and the abutters are concerned about the whole Greenway and also concerned about what's in front of their of their space. Um, what what we have done a two year dialogue with the abutters about is how best to optimize their dollars if they're going to pay into this. And after that two year dialogue, I think everyone has agreed that it is. In, in the interest of maintaining the whole Greenway, um, it is best to have bid, there will be a separate bid board. They will, just like the state now, we submit a, a budget to the state. They take a look at our operation and maintenance budget. They say how much they will give of that. Um, there are three things that the bid is going to, is agreeing to pay for if they agree. Um, we will submit a budget to them for those, and they will pay in for that, just like the state does. I don't, the state pays every six months. I don't know if it will be quarterly or every six months, that they will take their collections and put it into the Greenway budget. In order to optimize the coordination and the, and the taking care of the entire Greenway, because if you just took care of the parcel in front of you, um, you the Rings Fountain is hugely more expensive than some gardens. You know? So it, 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 it takes it out over the whole Greenway. Um, and make sure that the whole Greenway becomes the great park that it can be. Um, and, and finally, I just want to, obviously there's a lot of controversy that surrounds salaries and things like that. Um, and and I, I just want to know, how do you, how do you address that to the common, the, the common man out on, this, uh, on the street that says, you know, $185,000 is outrageous, $650,000 for five people, uh, that's more than the average state park in Massachusetts gets as a whole. How do you address that to those people? Um, one of the reasons we did this study that's summarized here in a benchmark is that we that we need to know what it really costs. You know, the Greenway is a very different park than anything else in Massachusetts. It's different because of the way we're funded. We, we are the only conservancy operating in Massachusetts the way we do. Although we are we are not the only one in the United States. This is a tried and true um, form for other parks. So we, we wanted to benchmark against both those parks, many of whom are listed here, and other nonprofits in the city. 
Um, when we gave Nancy a raise back in, in um, the summer, we benchmarked both nonprofits in the city and park operators throughout the country. Um, those benchmarks showed that she, at $185,000, um, she was below the average. Um, the average in that study was 226. Um, we have agreed with um, Secretary Davey that we are going to do another study. Um, we will make that available to you, of course, um, to, to study the um, executive salaries and to benchmark it against quasi public agencies, even though we are a nonprofit, against quasi public agencies in Massachusetts and against other nonprofits. And that will be done by an outside group. And we will be happy to share that. Yeah, I guess, I, I mean, and again, I, I'm just, with all due respect, I'm trying to figure out what it is that you say to somebody who, who says, you know, this is outrageous amount of work. Uh, you know, I see these people making outrageous amounts of money. But, and again, I, regardless of whether whether they're paid in line, um, I, I just don't know if that's an argument that, that well, rings true with people. I, I appreciate that. And if I were out of work and really looking for a job, I mean, I'm sure looking at that it would be like, wow, wouldn't I like to run a park? But there are there are, there are absolute um, requirements to run a park. You need, you need to be able to understand operations. You need to be able to raise money. You need to be able to do so many different skill sets. And what the reason I, I, I clearly wasn't responsive enough, but the reason I gave you those, you know, that we comped and that kind of thing is because there are skill sets that are required to run a large nonprofit and to run a, a public park. And that's what we benchmark against. Um, so I don't think there's anything I can say or anyone can say if someone who's out of work can say any amount of, of a significant salary is going to feel right necessarily. Um, but I do think that it is right. And it is right that if we want to have a, a really terrific park in the city of Boston, that we have to pay people the comparable wage in order to get them to work there. And that's that that was our philosophy, and that's what we did. Um, even though she, we don't think Nancy is below average, but she's agreed to work for a, for a below the average. I think that um, one of the, the the qualifiers that you know you use on salaries um, is often interesting because in the papers it's been called you know every you know extraordinary word and, and you know high. Word. If you look at the paper that's been printing that, they're yeah, all the extraordinary words come from Rush. Uh, well, well, not truly not extraordinary right. from Rush. But even the, the hyperbole about how high the salary is, if you look at their own database of executive directors, of I think they're 39, Nancy is three or four from the bottom. So you can call anything anything, but if you if you look at what the real numbers say. Um, that's that's what we feel as people who are uh, given the responsibility of running the Greenway. That's what we have to do, and that's what we've done. Um, thank you. I think we'll Thank you. Thank you, Representative. And just to follow up, the uh, on the uh, obviously the uh, compensation structure issues in what is in effect the public realm here. Uh, whether we call it public private partnership, but this is effectively in the public realm. Uh, any of that information uh, that was identified in the direct questions, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, of course, it's all on our website, but we'll get it to you. Um, we have an incredible amount of information on our website. Our audited financials, our tax returns, our 990s, our salary structure. Um, just, but, but, but don't need to go to our website. Just, just ask and we can get exactly what you want. Uh, um, just a couple of questions, if I may. Um, Secretary Davis' letter addressed several different issues. Can you tell me which specific parts of the letter that you're struggling with agreement on? Um, it's it's not a struggle with agreement right now. It's it's a joint in the conversation, and the, the the conversation really needs to flow from the five year plan. And so, since that five year plan takes a lot of work in terms of the the if then and the what, I mean. You know that there's a spectrum of how much public support and how much private support, and that takes a lot of work. The other, the other things in the secretary's letter, like the study of the executive salaries, um, like the the um, 
the public records law, like the public meeting law, they will all flow from from the, the whole plan. So it isn't necessarily a struggle with that. It's all for the continuation of the lease. And so concentration has been on what the business plan is. Um, the other thing is, this looks to basically reach out to 2017, the commitment from the Commonwealth. Were you aware that the commitment was going to expire in 2012? And what movement were you making towards basically uh, not having to come back and honoring that original agreement? I assume there was some logic and thought put back to the 2012 date. I wasn't part of the Greenway when the 2008 legislation was passed, so I'm not sure what, what the logic was behind the 2012 and at least running to 2013. Um, but it happened involved for several years now, and it was always um, the, the, the theory seemed to be that the, the state had the obligation to make sure that the Greenway was well maintained. Um, that they would chosen to do that through a public-private partnership, but there was very much a consideration um, throughout the, over the last several years that the state would continue to fund at the level of, of, of basic maintenance. Um, so it wasn't until it wasn't until Secretary Davies' letter that we had ever heard that that would be, even though it was only in the legislation that it was FY through FY12. Um, there had been many discussions with many people in the. Department of Transportation before Secretary Davey that led us to believe that the funding would continue. The legislation says 2012, so I don't know if the conversation is you know, um, well, it is, those conversations. But well, it, it is a state park, and so it is, um, you know, there are, there are obligations. Because that goes back to the representative's question is maybe we should be looking at the structure and how to call this right. Thank you. We have even major discussion. All right. Any questions? Other questions from members? If not, we'll continue the conversation. Thank you. Uh, just uh, briefly reading that bill for the Senate Conservancy 
has continued on, but not in the way that we envisioned. We had thought we would have interesting plantings instead of barren hardscape and boring spans of grass. I speak for many horticulturists who believed in the promise of the Shanghai. They cannot attend these hearings today because they are preparing for the annual spring flower show. We request a change. It's long overdue. The state legislature has had the authority over the Greenway Conservancy and now must terminate the lease. The Greenway is public land and the state can no longer knowingly waste public funds, time, and energy on an experiment that has not worked. Public resources are scarce and the public demands accountability. The Conservancy, unfortunately, has squandered their opportunity to deliver on their mission, have disappointed many, especially those of us who know horticulture. It's not too late to deliver on the promise of the Green Ring, but the lease must be terminated. The Conservancy lacks good governance. They failed on their mission and had misused public funds. The public is aware of this mismanagement, and they are aware that the green light is not green. There is no confusion. The Conservancy has failed. How can the green light be green when the Conservancy only spends 1% of its $4.7 million on plants? That means 99% of their budget is sent on, spent on high salaries, administration, public relations firms, and consultants. None of these make our world any more beautiful or attractive to the public. The Conservancy has accepted $14 million in state funds, I believe another two this year. That's over a million dollars per acre. We only have 15 acres. Where did the money go? The Conservancy is not fiscally responsible. The Department of Transportation, Secretary Richard Davy, has instructed the Conservancy to be transparent, as well as the Attorney General's office. What is the state waiting for? The evidence is apparent. The state gave the Conservancy millions of dollars, and they spent it on $2.2 million worth of salary for 35 employees. That's 2.3 employees per acre. At the same time, they've already hired out for the maintenance for $514,000 for the working. In the, in the rest of the budget are three public relations firms which are paid three times the amount of money that's been spent on plants. Consultants are paid for information that is wasteful. Georgia Murray just testified that she will have another study. The last study on comparable wages cost them $27,500 after I submitted the same study at their annual meeting for free. The community has been ignored, stonewalled, and marginalized by the Conservancy. Boston has robust communities from the North End, the Harbor Towers, Boston Hotels, the Intercontinental, the Leather District, and Chinatown. The Conservancy operates in its ivory towers and ignores its constituents. We also enjoy a robust community of horticulturists. I present to you a letter from the Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts with 12,400 members in 197 garden clubs. They have two obligations, community beautification and conservation, and they recommend the establishment of a Friends of the Greenway organization. <coughs> I also include other letters from community horticultural asking for change and request a Friends of the Greenway group. The Conservancy failed in creating a beautiful Greenway, therefore they have failed in generating revenue dollars for the state. Billions of dollars were invested in the big day, and we are still paying for that mismanagement. The Conservancy is now another public drain. It is not a draw for revenue. It claims it takes time to build a world-class garden. However, their benchmark for salaries include world-class gardens with results. We don't have results. Don't be confused. The Greenway can be made possible. <coughs> they want to convince you their work is difficult and they are special. Their only special feature is they waste public funds on a grand scale and how public relations firms 
convincing the public that they need more money while they exclude community interaction. I ask that you consider three viable options. I encourage you to support fiscal responsibility, community involvement, and an active Friends of the Greenway Group. I ask that you consider placing these 15 acres under the care of DCR. They manage 450,000 acres and successfully collaborate with friends groups such as the Charles River Conservancy, the Emerald Necklace, the Southeast, Southwest Park Conservancy, and City Square Park. If you don't like that option, continue with working in a $514,000 agreement where they mow the lawn, pick up the trash, and remove the snow. When the conservancy goes, no one will notice because we don't know what they do. The third option is to request bids for maintenance. That is a model that is possible and has been used in other parts. So please, I ask you to, to stop the continuing culture of the big city and act in the public's interest. I ask you to let horticulturists work on the horticulture and the greenway as a friends group. Let the community be heard and let the public be served. I appreciate the time to testify, and I've submitted written testimony with backup letters. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, and we, we do have the, uh, the submission and make additional copies for members of the committee, uh, so they'll all have access to the detail materials that you submitted. Um, as, as you can imagine, there are a number of working pieces here, and uh, we're taking this quite seriously and uh, trying to put this together. So thank you. Uh, any questions from members of the committee? Thank you, Ms. Uh, the next to sign in on uh, testifying on this bill is Joe, and I'm going to get the handwriting. Oh, he has a big man. Do you You know, if you don't mind, the number of people okay, you can submit, submit it, and you'll note it in the record. Thank you. Continuing with this, this bill. Um, Shirley Preston.
But by the time the conservancy began any work, it had already received ten million dollars in public money, nine million from the state and a million from the city of Boston through the uh, Boston DNC fund. Today, the conservancy has received over sixteen point two million dollars from the taxpayers. While it was being publicly funded to establish a private funding mechanism, the Conservancy was lobbying the state legislature to get itself an enabling law that terminated the memo of agreement provisions, particularly one that required it to work solely on private funding. If not for that requirement, there wouldn't be a Conservancy. It was created to spare the state's taxpayers any further burden from the Greenway making these costs. But just as it was about to assume its obligations, the Conservancy changed its business model. Alas, it discovered it couldn't raise private money, even though it had just spent four years demonstrating that it could and got the dedication on that basis. Um, they got themselves a lease, which they had originally wanted to be a 99-year lease, which is actually a, a, an ownership interest. But fortunately, uh, with, uh, uh, the state, the DOT, the term record, they kind of made it only a five-year lease, which creates this opportunity uh, to, to change our course. Uh, and uh, during that time, they lobbied for that enabling legislation. They got into it also, that commitment for five and a half million dollars which contemplates a budget of $11 million a year to maintain 13 acres of parkland. And the 13th acre is their uh, document that I, that I have of the uh, size. That's about $846,000 an acre <coughs> that they have laid out as their ultimate uh, business plan. The, the state DCR is now managing 450,000 acres with $70 million. $150 The city of Boston takes care of 2,200 acres with $15 million. That's $6,800 an acre. That's the context for this comparison. The Conservancy takes advantage of its 501c3 status to keep, to keep its books and meetings closed. It's legally exempt from the public integrity law, open meeting law, public records law, competitive bidding, uh, conflict of interest. And its secrecy may also be enabling uh, political influence buying by hiding the identity of big donors who uh, use this to curry favor with uh, public officials who support the conservatives. Yet, it controls our public realm using public money. Despite uh, Richard Davies' uh, requirements to make itself subject to the open meeting law and the public record law, the board confirmed. There's no ongoing conversation about this. The board confirmed that it's February 7th board meeting, that it is a 501c3. It does not have to comply with the public records law or the open meeting law, and it's not going to. It doesn't have to, and it won't. It will continue to have public meetings when it wants to, and private meetings when it wants to. And it will reveal to the public only the highly aggregated data that the IRS requires 501c3 entities to disclose. And I looked at their uh, uh, form 990s and audits and annual reports, and you cannot tell where the money is going. Secretary Bailey also demanded a business plan within six months that would bring the conservancy from public funds within five years, and to do what it promised as a condition of its creation, to fund everything private. However, the board has made it clear that they have no intention of privatizing the finances the way they privatize their information. It's going to lobby to maintain its public funding. It doesn't want to disclose its finances because then we'll see how little of the money that they collect goes into the park. We already know about the salaries and the Herald already printed a lot of that. And their programs may also be heavily larded with more administrative costs. For example, their Greek they do want the money on generous I should have said this earlier, and I'm not being fair to you. Um, reading the testimony doesn't help us if, if what you're doing is giving us what's being submitted. So if you could focus on the highlights or something that will help us uh, understand the testimony. Yeah, because I know when I hear testimony from other people, it's helpful. I, I always I, I, you know, I understand. I, I, I 
appreciate what you're saying. And as I say, um, I'm being unfair in pointing this out. Well, I, I'll, I'll summarize that would be great. because uh, the important the, the, my, my objections to the three provisions of the bill are that uh, well, the first uh, provision of the bill is that it will service will comply with the open meeting law. It won't. They've already said they won't. And uh, it's naive to think that you can box them in with legislation because they are legal exempt. And you heard today George Murray said also they need to have their private sessions. The Conservancy Leadership Council is not really a voice of the community as it was originally intended to be. If you look at online at the, at the uh, people that are in it, it's chaired by the uh, Vice President for Development of Boston Properties. It's, uh, you know, uh, only a handful of the seats are even filled right now, but it's all uh, corporate and political interests. It's not a group of uh, uh, disinterested neighborhood people and, and park lovers. So it's staff, it's biased, and they don't get any more information than the public does. They, they uh, are going to be, if they get to review the budget, they're not going to have any more facts than you do or, or, or than I do. And uh, I know people who have been on their ass and didn't get any more. They're going to see what the public sees. So that's not going to serve as a, as a check and balance. And as to the reduction of the um, state uh, funding obligation from five and a half million to four million, where did that number come from? Why is four million uh, a valid number for the state to be shipping in on this? The problem is that because the, uh, the, the conservancy has a blocked any uh, a competitive bidding, I've talked to the people at, at NASDA and said, well, we don't even know if there's a problem. We've created a conservancy because we can't afford to pay for the park. And we're given a conservancy that I think is multiples of what it actually costs to pay care of the park. The way that the good business practice for private buildings and local governments is to issue an RFP for bids. And until we know what this what this work really costs, we are, I mean, we are listening to the conservancy talking about there it shouldn't be four million, it should be six million. These are these are not meaningful numbers. It doesn't matter to us what the parks in New York are spending. They are very controversial. The parks that are being benchmarking parks are very controversial in their city. And most of them are privately funded anyway. So they are not apples to apples. We should be looking at this context of our uh, budget and what the state needs to put into uh, maintaining its public realm. So the conservancy, and I have always maintained this in all these years, we have never needed this conservancy. It has proven to us that we don't need it. We don't have to worry about the, all of these salaries because none of those positions are necessary. We need to, like Massport does, issue an RFP. I mean, if PCR can't take it over and their budget has been slashed so much that I, I'm not, I'm not uh, at all confident. I just want to point out, we've got another five minutes. Oops. I asked you to okay. see it. Uh, so, so that's all right. So that those are the three the three issues in that uh, in that uh, legislation that, that can't work. The, the conservancy is not going to be reformed. We have no idea how much money it really costs. We need to get bids. We need to terminate the, the lease. Get competitive bids. Hire a contractor to do a decent state maintenance job. And as you can see, there's there are friends uh, waiting to spring into action. Enthusiasts to take up the uh, volunteering and the and the community voice and the community input. So this is a very simple solution. We have made it into a complex problem, but the solution is very simple. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your testimony. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Ms. Crest. Uh, next to sign in with regard to uh, this bill.
in the North End of Boston. I'm also a volunteer editor for a community website on this North End Waterfront.com. And I have to say, I've assumed a written testimony. I have six pages here that I won't read to you, but I'm just trying to highlight the points you haven't heard before. Uh, the state legislature created the Rosa Kennedy Greenway Conservancy, and now it has to, to fix it. Greenway's public land, and the state cannot abandon it. The public private model can work, but the state must put in the proper controls. With that said, I support the bill as a solid first step, but I think the committee can do better. The Conservancy is not working in its current form, and let me tell you a little bit about why that's the case. Over the past four years, I've attended nearly all every public meeting held by the Greenway Conservancy since the 2000 legislation went into effect. I've published numerous articles, both positive and negative, on the Greenway Conservancy. I've reviewed financials. I come with really no special interest other than as a community, someone who lives in the community, uh, not far from the Greenway. I don't have any business or political ties uh, to the, to the uh, Greenway or the Conservancy itself. This is actually my first ever testimony uh, in the State House. Uh, I love the Greenway. I thank the state, the state for creating it. Uh, after the construction of the Big Pig, uh, Representative Mike Woods uh, talked about what we went through uh, in the North End of Boston. Uh, I think it's important to point out that the state created pretty much everything that you see on the Greenway. All the fountains, uh, the structures, the gardens, the pathways, the parks themselves were all done by under the direction of the state agencies, not the Conservancy. Uh, so what has the Conservancy accomplished? Uh, really very uh, very little after the 2008 legislation came to be and that's where uh, I think we need to hear about that. We talked about the misuse of public funds, it's well documented, excessive compensation, high paid consultants, PR firms, administration firms for fundraising that costs more than what it brings in. It may be lawful under the current legislation but frankly uh, we might not ever know given that there is no transparency. Over 14 million public funds have contributed to the Conservancy, uh, and the state continues to be responsible for the half of that. The basic truth is that the Conservancy spends more than 10 times per acre in comparison to other public parks. Uh, we've heard about the study that uh, has been done, uh, and it does not even include such world class parks we have here in Boston, such as the Public Garden, the Yes, uh, State Park, uh, and it, it goes out to controversial uh, ventures in New York City or Chicago. Uh, I ask the committee not to be fooled by the deception of those benchmarks. Uh, the lack of transparency is wholly insufficient, even for a 501c3 organization. Uh, what has happened is someone who videotapes and reports on Greenway's meetings is that largely they're, they're not, uh, there's no real debate or discussion. They're basically just announcements of what was already decided behind uh, closed doors. Uh, from the community standpoint, there's really been a lack of community interaction. Several years ago, the executive director of the Conservancy came to the, the North End to a community meeting. Uh, it did not go very well at all. Uh, and this was really before all the headlines that hit. Uh, people were starting to catch on that staff really had no intention of working with the community. Uh, most of the questions were deferred to a later time that never happened. To us, it appears that uh, leadership's more concerned with satisfying the needs of out of state tourists and people who engage with parks on a regular basis. Let me give you an example uh, of something that where the Conservancy has failed. Did you know that there's not one public restroom in all 13 acres uh, on the Greenway? Uh, the Conservancy can find money for $3 million carousels and six figure salaries. Uh, but why can't they find room for one restroom? It's because they, they think it's ugly. They think restrooms are, are ugly. They don't understand that you can't build attractions without basic services. At the end of the day, it's neighborhoods like mine that bear the front of this. When you see uh, tourists, college kids urinating in our uh, in our alleys and sidewalks, uh, and this, this was a, a fantastic opportunity to put some basic services on the green, uh, green which the Conservancy has not uh, followed up. The North End Fountains have not been uh, maintained for the of maintenance costs, uh, yet half of the fountains don't work in the North End. Uh, the Conservancy decided not to, to fix them. They think the state should fix them. Uh, there was a flood several years ago on underground vaults. Uh, so they don't want to use their, their precious you know, money because they have their own trophies that they want to build. Uh, and then there's the development of the ramp parcels that you uh, perhaps read about or address. There were supposed to be four museum recreational facilities along the Greenway 
And the Conservancy was supposed to bring those together with other agencies. We're not the only one that failed on that uh, front. Uh, but we certainly did not help the situation by focusing on needless luxuries. And speaking of that, uh, let's talk about the $3 million custom carousel. It struck me as odd when I heard about this because there's already a carousel in place, uh, a nice one. Why would the Conservancy give that up? It actually makes money on that carousel. There's no discussion, no debate, no justification. Many of us were hoping to talk about other options, be it the restaurant, be it the playgrounds, the top lots, the gardens, the recreational clubs, infrastructure, public park perhaps. But it was too late because we were told about the decision after it was made. Uh, to make matters worse, despite being bolstered by one and a half million dollar private anonymous donation, the Conservancy came to the taxpayer once again. And uh, mass development is paying 250000 towards uh, what's going to be a largely irrelevant permanent feature on public land. So let me tell you how, just to get into the point in terms of where I think that uh, you know, what the legislation, legislation should do, what the committee should do uh, with this bill. Uh, you know, I support accountability and transparency brings checks and balances. The legislation proposed by Representative Mike Blitz uh, and Senator Petroselli is a solid first step. I support giving the citizens group known as the Greenway Leadership Council veto power over the Conservancy's annual budget. This should just provide some oversight. I suggest the GLC go have further power uh, over compensation and contracts over a certain size of half hundred thousand dollars. I support the proposed legislation's requirement of compliance with the open meeting law. Again, I think the public records law should be added to that. If they really need an exception for anonymous donations, then, then fine. I'm not sure that's, that's actually uh, necessary, but I think uh, at least the, the rest of the public records law should go into effect. One idea is that I've uh, noticed when you look at a lot of conservancies and nonprofits uh, around the state, is that successful nonprofits have large boards and uh, councils in, uh, over them, uh, I think the, the GLC the Leadership Council and the Board of the Conservancy should be increased dramatically. Perhaps the 40 to 50 people that itself uh, is something that you see in a, a lot of uh, other conservancies that are well regarded in nonprofits. Amongst the MassDOT as the regulator to perform annual audits. Uh, private money, once inside the conservancy, should be subject to the same scrutiny as public money. And why do I say that? Because it is public land. The Conservancy justifies spending programs on $3 million themselves because they are largely privately funded. Regardless of the funding, it's the public that has to live with these results in programs and developments. So, just to sum up, we all know that public private partnerships can work effectively when the right incentives and oversight are put into place. We know that either the state, MassDOT, and ECR are currently equipped or funded to take on managing the Greenway. Uh, I am not a fan of the business approval district idea, not that it was ever really getting off the ground anyway. I think it's inappropriate for public land. Uh, I do love the Greenway. I do want to see it properly managed. I demand the state really live up to its promise and obligations to take care of these parks after the decades of destruction caused to my community uh, and those around it as a result of big deal, big dig. Accountability and transparency is really the only remedy for what ails the Greenway Conservancy. And only then can these park, parks justify the taxpayer funds uh, that, that, man, uh, that go to manage them and serve the public to use them. Uh, I thank you for considering my comments. Okay, thank you for your testimony. Any questions for the committee? Thank you very much. Well, I just ask that I know it's been a long afternoon, so and Chairman uh, you know, Strasbach about trying to be fair. But if you could try and, if you have written testimony, try and limit it a little bit. We want to make sure that everybody that came today got a chance. And I know we were. We're all very patient with the legislators that were here today. That took over an hour and a half, I think, of the meeting. So I appreciate your being here and your standing on that. But we want to try to get everyone that's on the list. So if you could be to the point and have written testimony, get it to us. And this isn't the only opportunity to weigh in on, on these pieces of legislation. Uh, so I just, again, appreciate your patience. And uh, with that, we're going to still try to finish up on House 1803. Uh, Richard Parr. Thank you very much. I'll be quick because we've been here a while. Yeah. Um, um, I also have comments on, on uh, 2660 and 2430. Um, I just want to uh, quickly explain. I'm from the city. I'm a policy director there. We represent um, the businesses abutting the Greenway. We have since the days of the project. Um, over the years, we've contributed a lot of money to the Greenway. So 
uncertainty in terms of uh, you know, direct contributions, um, you know, in between kind of staff work we've done on the study of what happened. Most recently, we donated $5,000 towards the restoration of the state parks uh, after the I fire events. Let's um, take three quick points about the proposed legislation first. Um, we are, uh, we applaud uh, our friend Nicholas and Senator Shelley for extending the state's commitment to funding this conservation. Um, our funding members feel strongly that continuing state funding for the Greenway, which is as well as state park, is essential. Um, after investing billions of public funds in the design and construction of the Artery and Greenway above, we will be excited for the Commonwealth to abandon its modest commitment to $42 million for the operating and maintenance. Uh, furthermore, ensuring the stability of state funding would send a positive signal to potential philanthropic donors to the Greenway. Um, Continued state funding of the Conservancy is a good economic deal for the Commonwealth. The Conservancy is able to leverage the state's investment in private donations, and the proposed conservative Conservancy budget, which includes the Business Improvement District and my organization, represents several of the abutters who are being approached about participating in the Business Improvement District, um, would leverage that state commitment further. This is the three-legged stool that you're talking about. I think you did, did an excellent job of explaining that. Um, based on our own independent analysis of the cost of maintaining the park space, we were asked by our members what it would cost if a third-party vendor were engaged directly to maintain the parks as they currently are in terms of the maintenance of horticulture and also the special features which currently exist, the light waves, the towns, and so on and so forth. Um, we came out with a figure of about $2.9 million with a maintenance reserve, which I should add, the service currently does not have. Um, so that's what it would cost for the state to take over the parks and hire a Valley Crest or another landscape firm to do that work for them. That's more than what the state is paying to the Conservancy right now. So the Conservancy is actually a pretty good deal based on the study that we conducted, and that was a study that was funded by our members, by the state, or anything like that. Um, you know, in terms of talking about the citizens and citizens district, public sector involvement in the bid is kind of the norm. Normally, it's a city engaging with the bid in order to establish a baseline of services, in this case, the state park. So it seems like the state would be able to continue that relationship. Um, in terms of the other two parts of the bill, the open meeting law and the um, and Greenway Leadership Council, um, we completely agree with the intent of the legislation regarding uh, transparency. Um, we know that the Conservancy has been talking to MassDOT about this issue. Um, We've also talked to MassDOT about this issue. We support the idea because our members who would be asked to participate in a bid want to make sure that their money would be well spent. Just, just the same as the public should be, should be concerned about public dollars. Um, we're confident that MassDOT and the Conservancy can come to some sort of resolution on this, and I think we'd, we'd like to sort of see that play out a little bit more. Um, regarding the Leadership Council, we're very much supportive of the idea of a community voice for the Greenway we always have been. Um, Mike Kamaluka, who is the chair of the Leadership Council, currently is our vice chair. Um, and he has had a great role sort of serving as an intermediary between the three organizations. Um, we just, there are some concerns amongst our members about uh, adding another layer of governance to the, to, the, um, to, to the mix. You know, one of the big conversations, that was like the two major conversations that we've had with our members regarding the viability of the business improvement district are one, governance. Uh, because it's a unique structure that we're dealing with here with the Conservancy, which is legally the, the entity that has the leasing and make improvements to the park. Um, and second is the state commitment. So um, maintaining the state commitment is actually what we care about. But also, we've been working very hard to come up with a governance structure that um, reflects, that, that gives business owners a say in how their funds are spent without necessarily impeding the process for the Conservancy in doing their job. And I think that uh, adding another layer to that with the Greenway Leadership Council may not be necessary, given the, um, the fact that the board member, the head of the Leadership Council, already has a voting role on the Greenway Board. And I think that it may complicate it so much. So, um, as I said, I have other remarks about other bills, but I'll hold off on that. As long as people can hear you, uh, okay. Uh, <coughs> that does amplify the, uh, the sound, but I'm sure we'll be able to get both. Thank you. Uh,
Committee. Uh, my name is James Ron. I'm the president of the North End, past president of the North End Waterfront Residents Association, past vice president of the North End Waterfront Residents Association, sorry to be co-chair of the committee and a Massachusetts resident all my life. Um, the comments and testimony that have been made uh, prior to me have been as eloquent and comprehensive and there's very little left for me to say. However, I do want to emphasize three or four points, which I can do very quickly. Uh, two general points, uh, which I would ask you, the committee to uh, consider. Uh, one is, why is a nonprofit preferable to a government agency for money to be? That is the overall question, are we doing this the right way? And related to that is the second question, uh, has the fact that the, the uh, conservancy has been in existence for eight years and perhaps has not proved itself to be the right way to do this? Uh, I would ask the committee to consider that in considering the overall question, governmental versus private. Or uh, the third possibility would be the Greenway combination, uh, governmental and private. The specific questions I would like to address briefly also are, um, I believe that complete transparency is essential uh, to all aspects of the Greenway's operation, that is public meeting laws, uh, open meeting laws, freedom of information laws. I believe there should be no exception. I don't see a reason for justifying an exception. Uh, there is the uh, there has been the suggestion in conversations that I've heard not so much today, but conversations that I've heard before, that the desirability of, of donations requires the possibility of anonymity of donors who wish to be anonymous. I'd like to point out first that there is no logical connection between anonymity of donors and non-disclosure of all financial information. That is to say, if the person wants to donate uh, uh, but keep his or her name private, that's one thing. But that does not seem to be to bear any logical connection to uh, what happens to the funds that have been donated. Those should be treated as public funds, uh, treated in the same way as public funds. I see no reason for it otherwise. I'd also like to uh, come at the anonymous donor uh, issue from a different direction. I have <coughs> the Boston Symphony Orchestra uh, program of last week, and in it I listed the great benefactors, that is, those who have contributed from $1 million to $10 million in their lifetimes. Uh, of those 122 total donors, 13, or just slightly more than 10%, are anonymous. Uh, it seems to me that, as far as Boston City Orchestra is concerned, people want to be known as donors. I wonder why uh, one would not want to be known as a donor to the green And I would ask you to keep that in mind when that issue comes up. Um, finally, Just one specific uh, item in the bill to, to discuss, and that is the uh, budget provision that says that if there is not an approval of the budget by the uh, Leadership Council, that the previous year's budget would stay in effect. That seems to me to mean that uh, if a uh, confrontation occurs that cannot be resolved, we will remain with business as usual, that is, the prior year's funding. And I don't know, that, I don't think that that is a good outcome, and I would ask the committee to pay attention to that, to that result. There must be a better way to do it than having, for example, the Conservancy present a budget that is unacceptable. Leadership Council does not approve it, and the Conservancy then is left with the budget they had the previous year, which
which many people feel is unacceptable as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Are there any questions from the members? Thank you very much. Say that again.